Good day, my name is Dean Crocker. I'm an equity analyst with the PSG Wealth Research Team, and today I'll be taking you through our latest EIA completed on Anglo Gold Ashanti. So on the 6th of August, Anglo Gold released its first half results for the full year 21 results. The results were worse than expected um, and were really received negatively by the market, resulting in a subsequent sell-off um, following the release of those results. And the sell-off was quite large. And this materially impacted the investment thesis as we stand right now. In terms of the results, you know, management highlighted the fact that the current results reflect the transitory nature of the group. Um, they are have recently appointed a new CEO, and there are hopes that he will be able to turn the business around. They've completed their transition out of South Africa with the full investment there, and they've also been impacted by a number of company-specific impacts or risks in the current results, resulting in substantially higher costs, as well as lower volume throughput. In terms of the valuation, you know, following that sell-off, the group does look very cheap. Um, they are trading at 40 EBITDA of 3.6 times, with a dividend yield of 2.2, supported by free cash flow of 7.4%. We are ever cautious when we ever uh, look at such companies. They are highly geared towards commodity prices, um, which in turn are impacted by macroeconomic events. And at present, you know, there's a lot of talks about inflation environment and a lot of uneasing um, talks, a lot of, lot of uncertainty within the market. And this is a time during which gold counters are academically are supposed to perform quite well. Um, and as such, that was part of our investment thesis when we started looking at Anglo Gold. So we were looking for an entry point into gold. Um, something that we could take not as a, a direct interest into gold but was indirect through a company and the purpose of it was as an inflationary rand hedge um, that does help during these times so following all of that you know the group is impacted and currently facing some counter specific risks which the market um, did not like in their latest set of results they saw a substantial increase in their all in sustainable costs um, and i'll talk about the results in the next slide but on the back of that, their guidance was also not as, as firm as liked. Um, the Abuasi mine in Ghana is still um, effectively under care and maintenance whilst they complete the investigation as to why there was that, that loss of life there. Um, and as such, you know, the group is also is facing some company-specific risks. However, given our thesis as an entry point to gold and, and for a RAND inflation hedge, which is more macroeconomic conditions rather than that of company-specific, we maintain our overweight recommendation. In terms of the performance, um, so the, the group did benefit from the stronger commodity prices. They realized gold price was $1,800. This was substantial enough to offset that 11% reduction in volume sold. The volume sold was was an impacted by both you know, the YC closure um, or suspension, probably a better word to use, as well as some of the, the impacts of the tailings dam in Brazil, which meant that the guys were, or the company was putting through lower grade iron ore. Um, that also resulted in higher costs, which impact the, the ASIC costs. Concerningly, however, the group turned from a positive free cash flow in the second half of last year to negative 25 million in this period. Um, and that is really a, a bit of a concern to us and we'll look towards the full year 21 results for further guidance. Headline earnings, 10% lower at $363 million. Um, however, they were able to declare a dividend of six cents per share. So in terms of the impact, um, on data of release, the market really took the results unfavorably. They, um, there was a big sell-off and we saw a 12% reduction close in that day's price, um, down to 247 Rand. Also, JC all said that it increased by 0.34%. Since the start of 2021, the year-to-date performance, it's down 49.9% relative to the JSE. And since June 21, which was our last overhead recommendation, the share price has declined by 8.65%. Yet to date, the return stands at an area of 31.8%. And if you look at the table, it has really been a poor performer relative to the JSE capital share over the last five years. Uh, you can see that there's probably a nice old blip in, five in the year five, but largely over the last three years, the group has really been under a lot of pressure. And, that, and management talks to the transitory nature of the group investment from South Africa, the moving away from Anglos, um, and they were really trying to discover themselves. The new CEO does seem to come with a lot of experience and a lot of exposure to Colombia, which, which is an area of focus for Anglo Gold. So we all hope um, we'll watch him closely to see what he's able to do in terms of the turnaround of this business.
However, the Fulia 22 and Fulia 23 guidance implicates or implies that that is the period in which the group should start to return to some normalized levels. In terms of valuation, the sell-off um, really did turn um, our attention to a much lower valuation. There's an 18.6% discount to its five-year average, as well as a slight premium to its factored peers, only 7%. It's worth noting that on a historical basis, the group has usually traded at a premium of roughly 33.7% to its peers. Um, the premium can be can be argued in the sense that, or justified in the sense that Anglo Gold is completely divested from South Africa and thus they should start aligned towards more towards their, their offshore peers um, rather than the local South African peers. In terms of valuation, it does seem like the group does offer value across multiple vectors. We are cognizant of the company specific risks and potentially see that the full year 20 results are probably going to be much lower or in line with, with guidance. Fully 22, 23, we could probably potentially see some increase. In terms of the assessment, the group should definitely benefit from cyclical high gold prices, um, especially now during these times of uncertainty. There also is an inverse correlation to, to Treasury yields. Um, we have seen a, quite a large fluctuations in, in the US Treasury yields with the 10 year you know, falling down to close to 1% and back up to close to 2%. So there's quite a bit of volatility in Treasury yields. We also have seen a, a depreciation of RAND in the last few days, back to over 15 RAND per dollar. And then there's the inflationary concerns, which is both globally and local. Um, Anglo Gold does speak in their results to the inflationary pressure that they saw. And this is definitely probably now questionable as to whether it's transitionary in terms of inflation or yet to stay. With regards to, to the results and the forward-looking assessments, you know, we do we were concerned by that sharp increase in the, the oil and sustainable costs, 33% increase. It was largely due to once-off costs, uh, particularly the tailings dam in Brazil, in which they were converting from a from a wet tailings to a dry tailings, if I remember correctly, um, as well as much lower ore content or lower grade ore content being fed into the feeders. Um, so the processing plants saw an increase in costs on the back of that. All reserves in terms of the entire group are heavily skewed towards Obuasi, which has remained suspended. Um, guidance says that Fulia 22 should see an increase in production, but it does only contribute roughly 2% of EBITDA right now, but is very important for the future of Anglo Gold, as, as the group roughly always talks about Obuasi as their flagship mine for the future. It's a, it's a longer term mine, and it's supposed to be at a much lower cost, uh, so we're still waiting to see when that finally evolves. In terms of the two existing mines, they continue to only contribute roughly 21% of the local ore, of the, the ore reserves, but 45% of the EBITDA. So based on the valuation and given the group, you know, they still have a signed balance sheet, free cash flow was negative and we are concerned by that, but hopefully it will return in the second half of year 21. Um, they do appear to offer value, particularly following that sell-off. There, there is obviously concern around the counter-specific risks, which we think have impacted the year 21 results largely um, and should probably continue to impact full year 21 um, whilst the cleanup and the transition within the group occurs. Full year 22, 23 onwards, um, management has, has talked about the transition in ending and, and kind of the ramp up to normalization in those periods. We are very happy with the geographic diversification, particularly given that there's no, no risk um, associated with the South African market anymore. It does help us and it should help the group start to align closer to its offshore peers, not fully to its offshore, offshore peers. Now, on the back of that, as I mentioned, we have maintained our overweight recommendation. If you'd like to place a trade, you know, please speak to your financial advisor. Alternatively, please speak to the trading desk. Please take note of the disclaimer. Have a great day further. Thank you. <laughs>